Sup, powerful nonsenses. Hello. Welcome to episode one, two, eight. Yes. That was right, right? That is right. That is right. One, two, eight. (laughs) Powerful (laughs) nonsense. Um, It feels like it's been a while since we recorded, but it's like... I think I've just been working too hard and it feels like... Yeah. I've had a wedding that I've been to. (sighs) Not your own wedding, then. Not my own wedding. (laughs) That would be a surprise. That would be a shocker, wouldn't it? (laughs) Just out of nowhere. Just out of nowhere. Wayne got married. Bit of a Las Vegas (laughs) wedding or something. (laughs) Like, go on holiday, come back with a ring on my finger. If you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. No, just saying, just saying to the girls out there, Wayne is available for marriage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway. Anywho. Uh, so, today, we're going to talk about the all-important crisis network. Should we tell them who we are first? Oh, yeah. You see, I'm, I'm so glad you're here, Jen, because every week, well, you're like, is... let's do the intro. But I think it's because I bollocked you the one time because you were like, dude, we keep forgetting intros. And, and now, now you're like, just, Wayne, plus intros. When I have to edit the videos after, I'm like, where does this go? We didn't mention ourselves. Oh, the little nameplates. Exactly. Which uh, will now pop up when you say, I am Wayne Ingram. And I'm Jim Yordis. I like what you did there. That was See very that? good. Really little smooth. Little that was little. like, swift. <laughs> like Taylor. Mmm, Taylor Swift. Oh, God, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> you're just objectifying Taylor Swift while some... <laughs> Anyway, Anyway. so we're talking about, now that we have done intros, uh, we're talking about the Crisis Network and why you should build one. Yes. For when shit hits the fan. For when shit hits the fan, when the proverbial shit storm comes. (laughs) And it is a ruin. (laughs) (laughs) And you're like, I need someone to turn to. I need people to support me and this, that and the other. And help, help, right? And you need to know who to go to for what issues... Um, what are some who's... examples of uh, situations where that shitstorm a bruise oh, come away? Because I know, mate, you, you might... know, I know this. You shit. may have a little bit of experience. You are the... like my crisis network. <laughs> the whole, the network whole. No. One. <laughs> I mean, you're you're probably like, if 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 I had like a, a council on yeah. my crisis network, you're like head of the council. Well, to be honest, I just gave you like a massage before we even started. He's like, my yeah. back hurts. I'm like, I've got it. I've got it. I was like, Jam, I woke up in so much pain this morning. Why? What's up? I'm like, oh, I rolled like, over, my shoulder's killing. He's like, here. lie on the floor. I'm like, and he's like, please do not like walk on my back. He's like, I know you're Turkish. I know you guys do that over there, but you ain't standing on my back. And I'm like, no, I'm going to... Yeah, don't worry. I'm going to dig in deep with the thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> in all the right places. <laughs> Put my gloves on. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> And that, ladies and gents, is why you need a crisis network. Oh, good. I'm crying. Oh, mate. Yes. <laughs> Simply massage. There was no <laughs> internal orifice touching. Mate, let's, yeah. let's, yeah. let's draw the line right there. Okay, let's get back to the show. Ooh. So, yeah. So, basically, you are, like, head of my crisis network. Oh, cheers. That's good to know. So, if, if the shitstorm really hits... But you always have your phone on freaking airplane mode. That's because of people like you. <laughs> <laughs> people are like, oh shit, come to jail, I'm like airplane mode, can't hear But anything. generally, this morning I had a podcast related crisis. I'm like on the phone to Jem or trying to be on the phone to Jem. I'm like, oh, not available. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> not available. Send the pigeon out. <laughs> anyway. Do you know what I might do though? I might get like a pager and I'll be like, look guys, you can page me. Why like, not just have your. Because I hate, like, when I... You're head of my crisis network, Gem. Okay. And sometimes I can't get a hold of you. I must be able, I need to find a way where it only accepts, like, it has to be emergency. Like, it has to, you have to, like, do an application form before it allows the call to come through. Well, you know, you know the do not disturb feature? Yeah. Right, oh, that can has I actually... A, no, that has a setting where if somebody calls you two times in a row, it will put the call through. <laughs> wow, why didn't you tell me this? I have told you this. You didn't listen. Do you know why, though, the actual main reason I don't... Oh, I'm flopping. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's 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 move on from okay, your yeah. from your because that's not crisis network. Mainly, I don't want the uh, Wi-Fi to fry my balls. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, back to crisis network. So <laughs> when the shit hits the fan, you kind of need your people. You need your peeps. You need those. But I think it's also really important to know who the peeps are that you shouldn't go to for certain situations, because yes. there are some people that will give you very bad advice about a lot of things. And they'll be like, oh, you should do this. And then you do that. And then it fucks up even more. And then you have to go to the rest of your crisis network. 
I think the first situation, the problem people have is they actually have no one that they have in their crisis network. That's true. It's like they're That's actually, true. most of the time people have problems, they kind of decide to hold them into themselves and they think, you know what, I'll figure this out myself or they're feeling too brave or too bold to say, you know what, I actually need help on a subject. So I actually think that from a, literally you have no crisis network, like there's mm-hmm. nobody you can turn to when you're not feeling good or you're feeling down or a project's gone wrong or I don't know, you're relationship issues i think number one you've got to start slowly building like yeah. feeling out like you know like you say you probably have a certain amount of people that you're like okay if i've got this problem I'm definitely add that person this problem yeah. that person whereas i think a lot of time people don't really have a crisis network or that crisis network is maybe just their partner and maybe that which is not, always dangerous which exactly which means it's not a kind of I don't know, you're going to get a bit of a biased view from that uh-huh. person because they're too yeah. loaded, whereas if someone can see it from the outside, I think that's a bit more important. And also when the crisis is partner-related, you can't really <laughs> yeah. go to your partner and be like, my partner gone fucked up. <laughs> what yeah. do I do? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I, and I think, it's very, I think for those with partners, I think it's very important to make sure you have a crisis network outside of the partner. Yeah, and I've also found as well, like as we've got older, after we've now gone over the 25... Excuse me, we? We're getting there. We're getting there. Or as we're maturing... I'll never be as old as you, Jim. You will never be as old as me. But, <laughs> back to the point, <laughs> I find that nowadays as well, like back, I know when we was like under 25 or whatever, mm-hmm. I think we used to all be really like hidden with our feelings or yep. kind of felt like it was, I don't know, a weakness to show you had a problem or you were sad about something. Yeah. And I think nowadays, now we're all a bit older, it's like we can't wait to kind of get together and share each other's like, feelings. <laughs> oh, you're feeling that way too? Yeah, me too. Yeah, and yeah. suddenly... I think we open up more and I think by doing that we help each other and I think it builds that crisis Mm -hmm. network. Yeah, I think you're right. I think younger people are really much more scared to kind of show their emotions and there's kind of a kind of... You've got to have your shit together otherwise you're failing at life. Yeah, and you're not cool if you haven't got your shit together. Like, you're a wimp. And it's like, actually, I I actually think it's you're much less of a wimp if you can kind of share those feelings, particularly when things are going wrong. Well, I think it's just... Being like, you know what, I know there's a problem here. I'm going to go find the people that are going to help me out. If anything, it's bloody super intellectual to know mm. that you want actually... Because I think most people may be even oblivious to the idea of going to somebody else for help. Yeah. They say, like, people ruin relationships and stuff like that because they keep making the same patterns over and over again. Yeah. And it's because nobody on the outside ever said, well, do you know why you keep failing relationships? Because you're a dick in this area and that <laughs> area and you fucked up yeah. this way and you keep doing the same thing uh-huh. and nobody's ever just sat them down and like told them about themselves. Yeah. And I think this is a really good point that you've just kind of <clears throat> not deliberately made, I don't think, but it's this idea that don't build your crisis network full of people that are just going to sugarcoat everything. Yeah. I know that I'm usually the person in someone's crisis network when someone comes to me, they're like, okay, I just want it do bare no, bones. No nonsense. Yeah, I don't want you to tell me what I want to hear. Just give me straight What's up? Yeah. Um, have I fucked up? Have I gone wrong? Because yeah. I'll be the one that'll be like, yeah, you did do, you were stupid. Like, yeah. That was a stupid thing to do. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think as well, you're always, well, it kind of goes back to that, have somebody who's going to call bullshit on you, Philip McKern always mm-hmm. talks about it, and I think you probably are probably one of the best people to go to for the, the bullshit me mm-hmm. like on anything. So that's, someone that you want to have in there, in that mm-hmm. team, really. It's also why some people don't want me in their crisis network. Yeah. Which I have learned the hard way many times, because <laughs> people are, like, telling me their shit, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're a fucking idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, there's a lot of swearing there's today. There's too much swearing. I'm, I'm so to sorry. hit this too explicit. So sorry. We, we always put it on explicit anyway, yeah, because, because we never know when someone might say, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, you have been warned, there's a lot of adult language in this episode nine minutes in. <laughs> yes, holy... <laughs> but um yeah. but yeah though no, i will tell i will call people out and be like you're an idiot and then sometimes people are like mm, it's not really what i need to hear right now i think you're an op <laughs> <laughs> i think it's like a, it's the number one person you need in that crisis network is the one who knows you really 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 well and then they're the one who can always see when you're kind of veering way up path in mm-hmm. any aspect of life because they'll see the changes in you mm-hmm. and they'll see that you're not acting in the same way and i mean obviously they're looking out that it's benefiting you because i think Obviously, sometimes you change, and it could be a positive change, and they actually back it up because they knew how you were in the past. But, yeah, I think you want that person there who's really going to see whether you are somehow maybe self, like self-sabotaging in a yeah. way, and then they're going to call you out and explain it, explain it to you, really. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, and I think it's good to make sure that you are also, on the flip side, also hyper-aware of uh, when 
someone's bullshitting you and sugarcoating it, mm-hmm. or just giving you generally bad advice. Yeah, I think it's... And kind of be aware, like... Like, be aware of who you're talking to in a certain situation. Like, if it's, you know, uh, a problem with, I don't know, your business, don't get advice from somebody whose businesses have just... just Well, someone that doesn't run a business for a start. Yeah. Uh, or someone that's just come out of bankruptcy. Like, yeah. <laughs> they're not the person to talk to in that scenario. And I think the same with with anything else. Like if it's relationships, don't talk, don't necessarily get advice from somebody who's never been in a relationship in yeah. the field. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, and, and so be hyper aware of who it is that you're talking to. And it's not to say you don't talk to them about it, but know when to take it with a pinch of salt. Yeah, and I think it goes back to that kind of Gary V self awareness is everything. Is kind of I think a lot of the time we already know what we're doing to mess up. Mm-hmm. I think we're just looking for the confirmation from somebody else. And so I think we always know. Yeah, we do know where we're being stupid or making a mistake. Or I know even with you, even today when we had a chat, you were kind of just saying, like, everything I said back to you, you kind of like, that's what I was thinking anyway. Yeah. But I think sometimes you just need that person to sort of... To confirm it. Confirm it. I think often, <laughs> oftentimes that is the best function of the crisis network is just to go, am I thinking right here? As opposed to being like, what do I do? Because uh, I think if you bring something to the table and are like, this is, this is what I think the solution is. Yeah tell me if I'm right or wrong, I think that's the best use of a crisis network. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of there was a documentary or a series on like a while back on like Channel 4 where they had like a group of people who follow some man around or a woman around mm-hmm. all day long and every decision he makes, like the group would make a decision and right. advise him. Right. And it's kind of that idea, like if you can have more brains thinking about a decision you're making, right. a lot of the time the guy was going to make that decision anyway, but it makes you feel a lot more comfortable to uh, make that decision when you're backed up by that other, that many yeah. other people, and especially people you trust and value. Yeah, and that's why I think it's important to get multiple opinions yeah. on one issue because you will have the person that is like the go-to person, but you know, doctors can misdiagnose, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're experts. And you know, I think it's good to just make sure that once you've got that opinion, just back it up with another person's opinion, just to see if they do match. And I'm that's one thing I always do with my crisis network. I'm like. I will talk over a span of a few days. If I've got an issue, I'll talk to several people about it just to kind of see what the sort of general consensus is on how I should move forward or whether I'm reading the situation right or anything like that. So, yeah, I mean, just don't have your crisis. I think, again, don't have your crisis network as like one or two people kind of have a a rate. I think about five or six people is good, a good number of people, because also... When you have a crisis network, you don't want to be in a situation when you're in a massive panic, massive crisis, and you can't get hold of the person that you need to talk to. Airplane mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's good to make sure that you've got someone else that you can go to just in case. I think so. I think it's just so valuable for your mental health as well. Mm-hmm. Like, we know that we work better together, and right. I think you sometimes it's very easy like to get yourself in a crisis because actually like you've been like burning yourself out, maybe you've been working too much, so maybe your willpower's low, so you're making bad decisions based on that. And someone might be like, you know what, you haven't rested, you haven't slept well for the last three days, you need to just go look after yourself for a few days, and then suddenly you can make the decision for yourself again. Yeah, So it's kind of like outsourcing the weaknesses that maybe you develop, maybe in relationships you had similar things happen over and over again, or Mm -hmm. you're burnt out, or you're having stress at home, or you've got family health issues, or something like that. Yeah where someone knows you're under that tough tension and so they can be your rational thinking for you. Yeah. And also, you know, you don't want to be in a position where you're going to the same person all the time with all of your shit and just like... Unloading. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's not, it's not good for either person if it's, if it's that, because then that relationship becomes about dealing with shit as opposed to actually a good relationship and nobody's there just to take all your shit. (laughs) No, I think this is kind of like a, quite a big topic which I think probably we should save for the second half because yeah. I want to jump into that because okay. I think there's a lot of people out there that use that crisis network as some sort of like ego feeding so okay. we'll jump into well, let's, that well let's take a break now because about halfway through the episode so awesome. we'll take a break now and then we'll dive in on that in just a sec so we thought we'd just take a few seconds just to say thank you to our sponsor yep. the University of Northampton huge thank you to them for supporting the show um, so why should you check them out well, first of all, we're we alumni. There. We yes. went there. So everything that we kind of deliver to you it kind of comes from them in a way. Um, but also, they're not just about getting a degree. The thing we love about Northampton Uni from experience is the fact that you come out of your course with your degree, but also 
there's so many options on the table. They understand that it's not just about going out and getting a job anymore. It's also about the possibility of setting up your own business and becoming an entrepreneur. And to top that off, <laughs> it's not just about setting up a business. It's about setting up a social enterprise. That's their specialist area. So if you're thinking of setting up a business, it can also be one that's doing good to the world and delivering social impact. So check them out, northampton.ac.uk. And a huge thank you to them for supporting the show. We're back. Hello. So, yes. let's jump straight in. Let's go. Right. So, the point was, don't use the same people to unload all your shit on all the time. And don't yes. build your relationships around being able to unload your shit on them. That was yeah. the point. You My, wanted to jump in. I did go. want to jump in. <laughs> My point on this one, I think <laughs> nowadays as well, when you've got like a lot of people who maybe dislike what they do and not really happy with life, I think... We've got this sort of culture of like only where's Essex or EastEnders where we constantly mm-hmm. like want drama in our lives. Yeah. And so I think a lot of the time people think they've already got their crisis network, but actually that crisis network is actually still feeding the bad behaviours that you keep yeah. doing over and over again. Yeah. And actually they like to keep you in that sort of loop of just having the same issues, our boyfriend problems and work, my boss is this and my boss is that. And it kind of pulls this whole negative vibe mm. into it. And I think that sometimes people like to build their lives around sometimes just reinforcing how unlucky and how poor little old me and these people around them are like, yeah, it sucks for you. Rather than being people that like call bullshit on you, you kind of got like a collection of people who kind of keep you all at the same level where you're yeah. not trying to fix the problem, but you're actually just reinforcing why everything else is against you, mm-hmm. which I think sometimes dangerous as well, because then you'll get these people who end up for years never growing because together they're just sort of building Holy. life around drama and things yeah, like that. Yeah, they love the drama and I think sometimes people love that drama or I love having those issues because it's their way of feeling, I don't know, seen or alive in some ways. Yeah. And so they love going to that friend and just like, you've got those friends who are literally like, well, I don't really hang up them anymore. But you have people... <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's just you just haven't got the time for it. You know, yeah, like you yeah, go yeah. to that person... Yeah. And you know exactly what you're coming to get. Okay, I'm going to sit here and that person's going to grill me for like the next hour about how shit their life is, how they yeah. hate their boss, how they wish they did this, how their parents keep doing that to them. Da, 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 da. And you know you're getting the same story and they love just reinforcing the, the whole plum effect, call it well yeah. effect. And they don't ever want to do anything about it. And then you sit there and you, you're like, oh, you, you know a hundred times over you've told them what they should start trying to do or maybe they should start seeing it this way. And you're so you get to the point where you don't even want to have the conversation back to them anymore because you keep telling them the same shit. Yeah. And they never do anything about it. And it's kind of like, well, actually, a crisis network or a, a relationship with people is there to help you develop and change and move forward. Absolutely. Not just to hold you in the same position by listening to the same full patterns and you're not doing anything about it. Yeah. So that's no, my kind of gist on that. Yeah, but I think it kind of raises a point that, that with something like with your crisis network, I think self awareness is key. Like you can't, you can have a crisis network and that's great. But if you haven't built your self-awareness first, like your crisis network shouldn't be the ones that you go to where when shit hits the fan and you're just kind of like, I don't know what to do. You you should at least take the time to assess your own mind. And then if you still can't come to a conclusion, then go to your crisis network. And which is why I think often it's best when you go into the conversation where you're going, well, look, this is what I'm thinking. This is how I've read the situation. Do you think that's correct? Mm. I'm thinking this is how I should react. Do you think that's correct? As opposed to just being like, what do I do? Because then it means that you've not gone in with self-awareness. It means you, you're very, you're, uh, it makes you much more open to, to bad advice. It puts you much more in a situation of on the back foot and making reactionary uh, reactions um, <laughs> as opposed to well thought out uh, and and just logical decisions because um, I think I can speak for myself when I don't act out of self-awareness that's when things usually go wrong for me when mm-hmm. I just knee-jerk reaction um, primal yeah, lizard and I go whoa but if I take the time out and I just think on it for a little bit then usually I'll I'll come up with the with the solution myself, and then not have to go. Like quite often, I'll have a conversation where I'm like, so this situation happened. This is how I dealt with it. Um, and sometimes I did the right thing. Sometimes you're like, mm, careful. <laughs> um, but I think it's good to have 
have that balance as well and just make sure that you're being mindful with the way that you're acting to things. I think it's fine to have like these sort of like gossip conversations with friends yeah, here yeah. and there and stuff like that it doesn't always have to be, okay, so how are we going to develop on yourself and how are we going to move your our relationship forward and how are we going to make you better? But I do think when you want, I think if you can have a group of friends that you know like they are that forward thinking in terms of, mm-hmm. you know what, every day I see you, every time we meet up, I want us to get a little bit better or let's see what problems you're going through right now, let's work through them and you want a group of people that's constantly pushing you and helping yeah. you to grow. Yeah, definitely. Um, on that basis as well, another thing that I think is really important is is being aware, very aware of the members that are in your crisis network and the ones that actually do support you when it is a genuinely full-blown crisis. Yeah. The ones that are there that will go, look, I will, if I, if you need me to come and see you, I will come and see yeah, you, yeah. I will drop everything. Because what you don't want to be is have built up this crisis network and they've only dealt with like mediocre things, but when the shit really hits the fan, <laughs> you've got nobody there to support you. Particularly, yeah. I mean one of my worries is always the fact that I don't live near my family. Um, so I have to have surrounded myself with people that I can trust yeah. so that when shit does seriously hit the fan and if I'm in an emergency, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got people that I can go to in, in there, London yeah. that can get to me within, you know, 30 <laughs> minutes yeah. as opposed to two hours. Yes. Um, and I think it's really important to consider your own situation like a lot of people mostly do have their family that they can turn to in mm-hmm. situations like that but you know particularly young professionals that have often moved to london from yeah. elsewhere that's not always the case so it's really if you're not living near your parents it's super important to make sure that you have surrounded yourself with reliable people that aren't just there to be in your crisis network so they've got some gossip to talk about and aren't just there to so that the crisis network kind of makes their own life a little bit more exciting because all they do is go to work and live for the weekend um, and that this is their little bit of drama that they get every week. Yeah. Um, and it needs to be people that will, if you really desperately need them, yeah. they will make sure that you're okay. And I think a lot of this comes down to literally like friendship and relationship building. Mm-hmm. I do find that the people who are like the drop of the hat friends are probably the ones you've spent the most time with, yeah. you've got on holidays with, you've nourished, you go out for meals, mm-hmm. you take time to see them. I think a lot of my friends now, I see them as my family. I'll be comfortable with them right. just walk in my house and go if they want to use the bed, if they want to use the fridge, if they want to, I would want them to feel that way. Yeah. And I think that's not happened over like night or in a couple of months. That's like 10 years in the making or more, mm-hmm. some of them. So yeah, it is one of those things where it is about nourishing your relationships i think sometimes it's so easy to get so tied up in your work and doing everything that actually if a crisis was to occur and you do get run over and now you're sat in hospital for i don't know three months or something who are the guys that visit you every day to keep you awake right. and to make you feel like oh my god someone cares about me or are you going to be there you know what all those guys you were down the pub with haven't seen you and then yeah you're like, oh now i see who my friends are yeah and i think sometimes it does take a crisis to let you to to finally you to figure out okay these are the ones, these are the ones yeah. who are there. And sometimes it might even be someone you didn't expect as well. Yeah, I've had that many times yeah. where somebody's kind of appeared out of nowhere mm. and just like, oh, I just wanted to make sure yeah. you're okay. And and those are then the people that I do very much like. <laughs> it's almost like, in fact, I remember having this conversation with somebody that once they kind of checked up on me and wanted to make sure I was okay. I was kind of like, you're going to regret this. <laughs> because... When he was ready to unload. Because... Stuff in a way you've kind of just opened up the floodgates because now I know that you're, that I can trust you. Um, and you know, there will be times that I will probably call on you for support because you know, you clearly care and and whatnot. And, uh, I think they didn't think I was being as serious. as. And I think (laughs) think as as well, I think like sometimes you might not see somebody all the time, but I always like to let people know like I'm here for you. If you need it, like we might not chat every week, we may not see each other for months, but like if something's up, like I'm here, I'm always here for you. Like, yeah, I think that's a really good friend who can say that to you. Yeah. I do think you sometimes won't have time for certain people, but underneath, you know, like if if shit was to hit the fan, I'm there. (laughs) Well, I had a, a bit of a crisis a few months ago, actually. You kind of reminded me of a friend of mine that I don't speak to very often, unfortunately, but, um, we go way, way back to school days. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and I had a crisis when I was en route to Birmingham mm-hmm. to visit my family. It wasn't even when I was in Birmingham. And I I just sent them a message. Like, I know I haven't, spoken, I haven't seen you for a long time, but I need someone who's in Birmingham that I can talk to and 
She was there straight away, no problem. And those are the sorts of people that you need to be putting in your crisis network, not necessarily the people that you're meeting on a weekly basis to mm -hmm. unload. It's the ones that, again, you know if you need them, they're there. And they'll, they'll only not be there if they really can't. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, does happen, unfortunately. So we're coming up to the end. Is there any sort of like suggestions we should give out to people on how they can build up that crisis network or maybe even just to define what is a crisis sometimes? Because I think sometimes people might actually... Like, well, I they think... can make things, anything into a crisis and it can become yeah. drama. I think it is the... We've got this thin line between this kind of ego drama mm -hmm. crisis person and then we've got the people that are like you know what I I'm doing big things with my life I'm trying to push myself forward and I'm coming up against failure after failure well I think it's hard to describe it's hard to define because I think it is all relative because mm -hmm. you know for somebody that has pumped all of their life into their work and then to see it start to crack for them that could be a crisis for somebody that you know uh well, I mean, it's just so relative. Yeah, you can't that, say once. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to. Uh, yeah, exactly. I don't want to say that. You know, the issues that I think are a crisis that to me would be a crisis yeah. are or aren't a crisis for you. I don't kind of want to get into that conversation because I, you know, first world problems and all that. We all complain <laughs> about certain things, but I'm sure the uh, the little kid in Ethiopia is like, mate, you think you've got problems? Yeah. Um. So I kind of don't want to, <laughs> don't want to try and define a crisis, but I think. Um, in terms of working out who should be in your crisis network, I think most of what we've said, just really be, A, be really self-aware of what it is that you need from your crisis network. And B, just be really, not. I don't want to be say critical, but just be really aware of the way your friends treat you when you don't need them, mm -hmm. in a way, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Like the ones that, uh, only ever want to see you, only invite, to, uh, like, open to arranging something when it's their birthday, for example. And <laughs> that's the only time they really make an effort with seeing you. Those are probably the people you don't want to have <laughs> in your crisis network because yeah. they're about them, not about you. So just, yeah, just be aware of when you're Happy being friends, taken <laughs> advantage of. Yeah, yeah. I think you just got to know what a good friend is yeah. like. And, be able and to I think, I think it's one of those things, you know it when you see it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it becomes uh, usually when a crisis does happen it becomes very quickly aware you become very aware very quickly of who is there for you yeah and I think and one final point on those two ones you just made there is just be vulnerable enough with your friends yeah. so that they know that you know what you're open to their help yeah. because sometimes people won't help you yeah. because they don't want to feel like they're kind of getting involved in your issues but maybe from be from behind the scenes they can see that they wish they could be open enough to help you but you haven't kind of given that little crack in the door to say you know what here's my hand I need your help help precisely. me precisely yeah yeah I agree I think that's a nice place to wrap up yep I think uh, yeah it was quite a Quite an honest, little vulnerable little episode. I quite like that. Um, if you have any comments, questions, ideas about Crisis Networks as well, please leave a comment either on the uh, episode breakdown, on the YouTube video, or on Facebook or whatever. Please leave a comment. We love interacting with you guys. We're not going to have like a crisis hotline on the website. No, no oh. crisis hotline. <laughs> we, I mean, there's probably an episode that we've done based on whatever crisis you're dealing with. So you can consider us your crisis <laughs> network that way. But, um, but yeah, so any ideas you've got on, on what makes a good crisis network or anything, please leave a comment or hit us up on the twits at pn <laughs> underscore podcast. Yes, um, the twits, I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, if you are not a subscriber, hit subscribe either on iTunes or YouTube and give us some love with either some thumbs up or, or a nice good iTunes review. Reviews matter. Reviews really matter. It really does help get the show out there to everyone. And I think this is actually a really good episode. Actually, I think a lot of people could do with hearing this today. So please share the episode. But yeah, leave a review. Five stars or more would be lovely. And we've also, just in case you're wondering, well, how do I leave a review? Powerfulnonsense.com forward slash review. Correct. We'll give you the instructions sure, on how to do all it. All over the place. Loving it. Uh, so thanks very much for tuning in, guys. And we will catch you next time. See you later.